Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Ultraman Tiga. This is the Seho version, multi-type, and it is, to my knowledge, the second reissue. So the third release overall, I believe that's the story with this. It is the one that's in stock at Big Bad Toy Store, by the way, if you need one, check it out, link in the description below. But that's how I know it's the most recent reissue, is it, it is still in stock. And there have been some QC issues with this figure. From what I understand, I haven't owned it previously, but I've done a little bit of research and my buddy knows all about it and I've talked to him about it. Anyway, this is the newest version as far as I can tell, and uh, it's pretty cool looking. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. Okay, before we look at the figure, I do want to show you my package. This is the package, and maybe those of you who know more about this particular release can tell me if this package lines up with it being the most recent reissue. I have no idea. Like I said, I haven't owned it before, but it is a fancy package. It's all scuffed up, so it might be older. I don't know. Like I said, there's no way for me to know because I can't just find that kind of information easily. But yeah, it's a cool package and it's different than regular figure arts. He's got a black tray. He comes in a black tray and then there's a black tray for the accessories also inside there. So if you like that kind of packaging, that's pretty good. If you don't, then uh, there's no window or anything for you to look at and some exceedingly dark photos on the back of the box. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this guy. I wanna start with a quick question of the day. Which version of Ultraman is your favorite? I don't know. I think after diving into the Ultraman rabbit hole a little bit, I might be leaning towards Tiga here. Uh, I don't know for sure. And I'm assuming it's pronounced Tiga, by the way, but I, I don't know. Like I said, I have not watched very much, if any, <laughs> Japanese Ultraman at all. Uh, I know I watched a little bit as a kid, and I'm guessing that was the American show. And then, of course, I watched like the Netflix series and things like that, but... I don't know, you guys can let me know. But anyway, I like this guy's design a whole bunch. But I also will be reviewing Dinah and whichever other one goes with these guys. I don't remember the names. There's like a group of three that work together or something. I don't know. Anyway, okay, let's get into let's get into the meat and taters here. This guy stands, including the whole helmet, about 15 and a half centimeters, just a touch over that. And that's gonna make him just about six and a quarter inches. Roughly. Here he is up against a Marvel Legends Darwin. Not in scale, right? And so we're not going to really have any reason to do this, but very out of scale, scale with Marvel Select. And then here is a McFarlane Batman. Still out of scale, for sure. Like He's not going to be in scale with anything. He's very small, comparatively. Okay, so uh, this guy does look really nice. I don't have it overexposed or anything. He is just very shiny. The silver parts are very shiny. You can see like it's not overly bright. My film is not or my video is not so bright, you can see the white on Captain America, it's not like super washed out unless I face it right towards the lighting, but still, he's just very, very shiny, and it looks great. I love the way this figure looks. It's a very, very clean paint job, very clean everything. The eyes are nice and transparent so they catch the light nicely, you can still see the little, the little cutouts in there very well. Very, very good looking, the silver paint is very nice. No shading anywhere. I do think we could benefit from some shading, just a little bit to kind of bring them to life. But yeah, it's very clean. Very, very, very clean. I like it. I like the sculpt on this guy a lot too. It's, it's very organic looking. I think it's a very good recreation of the uh, live action, the suit actor. It looks just like him, really. I mean, they did a really good job with this one. I love it. And then the... Uh, the detail paintwork, it's not like absolutely perfect. You can see a little bit of silver in there along with the gold, but I mean, it looks pretty good if you ask me. It's very clean. So yeah, I like it. All right, aesthetically speaking, it's not like the most interesting figure in the world, but it does exactly what it's supposed to do. I think very well. I will go nine out of 10. It's nice. I would like a little bit of shading just to bring him to life and uh, just maybe a little bit cleaner paint but that's hardly a thing. All right, now as far as accessories go, you get a bunch of hands. There's a whole bunch of hands, I don't need to name them. Uh, you get the alternate chest piece, so you can go from the blue to the red, and then you get the alternate forearm piece so that he can do his uh, super ray. I can never remember what they're called. Gosh, I can never remember what they call it. Any, uh, anyway, he's got that. His is white mostly, semi-transparent. It's kind of milky, uh, but yeah, it looks good. It is, it is transparent and uh it looks nice when you put it on his arm so that's good not a ton of accessories but that's like all you need really it's ultraman he doesn't really need anything else so it's a bunch of hands i'll say 
9 out of 10, 8 out of 10, you can pick. Maybe he's got more, I don't know if this one has any other effect parts that would be useful to him. So, um, I don't know. All right, let's talk about the articulation. This guy's kind of unique and I'll try to cover it as best I can and I'll explain that in a minute. So he does have this hinge in his head rather than ball pegs and that is for this joint back here. Um, or not the joint, but this piece back here. It has like a hinge in the neck to hide that piece, which allows him to look up pretty well, surprisingly well, I like that. But it does mean that there's just a hinge and a straight peg in the head, so he can't really lean on that top joint. It's gonna do most of the leaning on the neck. So he's a little bit more limited than you might have from other Ultraman figures, just a little bit. Um, but mostly they have that same sort of thing with the hinge at the top, from what I can tell anyway. All the ones I have have that, so I don't know. It's okay. It's not the best thing ever, but you can probably get that done thanks to the good neck joint. Now this piece over the shoulder is very soft, so it doesn't get in the way too much, and otherwise he does have basically your standard Ultraman shoulder hinge uh, with the big cap over it. So it looks nice. Doesn't get in the way as much as it could, so I don't hate it. Like, that's fine. I'd rather it go higher, and I'd rather they have a more traditional uh, ball hinge setup rather than the cap on there, but it's okay. There is a butterfly joint, which allows him to bring his arm forward. This soft piece isn't soft enough to really allow him to do too much. You can see it flexes, but it's not really generating a whole lot of extra range but it works out pretty well. Like it's not gonna be a huge hindrance to pose ability. You do get your bicep swivel in there, that's fine. Elbow joint is a double jointed elbow, kind of. It's a little bit extra. So you get that range, which is really nice. It's kind of a goofy looking elbow and that's because they added a weird, weird swivel hinge type thing in the elbow. Doesn't work like the uh, Kenny Kuman guys. It has a weird hinge in there. You can see the little hinge. Strange. Don't like that, but it's not like a huge problem, but it is weird. Then you get your little ball hinge wrists in there. This is a softer piece too, this right here. It's not super soft, but it's not gonna get in the way too much. So you can use your ball hinge wrists well enough, but not particularly well. Okay, now we have a ball peg on the torso here, on this top joint, which is pretty limited. You're not gonna get a ton going on there. It'll wiggle a little bit left and right, forward and back. Not a ton, again, that's fine. Rotation's fine. This is a soft piece. You can see me squeeze it. Hopefully you can tell I'm squeezing it. It's a pretty soft piece. Now the thing is, uh, I was talking to my buddy and he showed me his and his crunches over really far flexing this soft piece. And it's kind of like a big deal because it makes it look like a guy in a suit. Um, made of like spandex and rubber and, and whatever else they'd use and it looks good. However, when I tried to do mine, it doesn't want to go. Like if I really force it, the plastic, this outer plastic flexes, but it also wrinkles the paint on there. I don't want to F it up too much. So I don't really want to do it anymore. And it's not, it, it won't hold that pose. It'll move on this bottom ball peg. Don't get me wrong, that part works, but there's a hinge in here that I cannot get to work. So I don't know, it's supposed to work. I'll show you, actually he just messaged me, so I'm gonna cut this, but I wanna see what he said. Okay, so he's telling me he has the second release and his is definitely a softer material here, or some sort of rubber. This does feel to me closer to a soft PVC, which could explain that it's more limited than the second release. He knows his is second release. I'm assuming mine is third, and especially since this and this feels the same, because this is PVC here and this feels the same material. I do think this is what's restricting it. Uh, his said He said his paint wrinkles too, but it goes away when you're done posing it. But yeah, mine just does not wanna do much. And it, it really did work well for his. So I'm guessing the second release has better range due to the material here. This is the third release. I don't know how much you care about the ab crunch on it. So that might, you might want to track down number two. I don't know how you'll be able to do that effectively. <laughs> Maybe there's a way. This is number three. It's readily available. So I don't personally care about that sort of thing, but it would be nice. I don't think it leans side to side in there. So it would be nice to have better range, but I, I'm not going to try to force it anymore. Uh, so I guess that's the way that goes. All right, for the hips, they tuck in and he gets out to almost the splits, like not fully, oops, not fully, but that's pretty good, I'll take that. And no weird, ugly gapping, not really. Going forward, they tuck in again and the crotch is a softer PVC, so he kicks fine. For all the people that say, oh, you should use drop downs. Eh, I don't think you should, <laughs> you don't need to. Look at that, he kicks just fine, really high, that's nice. He does go back a little bit, even though he has the butt on here. It's a relatively soft butt, 
and you have a little bit of extra play in here so you can bring the legs back and forward nicely thigh swivel works well going out to the side not so much inside but you don't really need that so that's pretty okay by me double jointed knee well it's okay I mean you get decent range there that's fine uh, but they did that hinge thing again down here which I just don't get what is that really for that's so strange I don't know and it's kind of loose too so yeah I don't care for that at all I just would never would never use that and it's not really a hindrance in any way other than a little wiggle there but eh, whatever all right for the ankles you have your little ball hinge which has decent range except going forward it doesn't really and I'll show you why if I don't drop the figure there's a little plastic lip right there at the bottom. You see that extra lip? That doesn't need to be there at all. It doesn't really help the aesthetic. If anything, it kind of hurts it. And it does get in the way of the ankle range. So my buddy cut his off. I would probably do that too if I modified my figures. I would recommend it if you are getting your figure to pose and don't care about resale value at all. Uh, I would cut that off. Just carefully if you're a kid and or adult but definitely with adult supervision if you're a kid uh, but yeah i'd cut that little lip off and you'd get better range going forward because you have basically none on there as is but beyond that we do have a nice enough ankle rocker so that's pretty good there you go and you get a toe hinge which is well enough placed and well enough done it's not perfect but it will do so yeah, his articulation, if you have one that has the torso that works better, it's pretty solid. It's not like the most articulated figure ever, but in order to do it while looking good, it does a good job of that. And I have to say, this is one of the best looking Ultraman figures I've looked at. And so I like that a whole bunch. And if you have the range, then great, but everything else works well. So I'll give his articulation a seven. If I had the better ab crunch on mine, then I'd give it a higher rating. But as it is, it's just, it's fine. Nothing special, but it does work well enough. Okay, so now it's time for the final verdict on this guy. Gorgeous looking figure. If you like the way Ultraman looks with the blue and red and silver and gold, this is the one to pick up for sure. It's gorgeous. It looks so good in hand. Uh, in fact, let me grab, I think I have Ribbit right here. I know his name isn't Ribbit, but that's what I call him because it's funny. Uh, he's got the more yellow eyes and a whole different look altogether, but that one, this one right here got a really good rating for me and I liked it a whole bunch. But this one, Tiga makes this one look bad. <laughs> and they're both good, but this one's really good. So yeah, the, the Seho Tiga is nice. And I would recommend it. Yeah, I'll give it an overall rating of... Um, I'm gonna say because I can't get the ab crunch to work, it doesn't pose that well. It does look, I'm still gonna go eight and a half out of 10. I like it a lot. I would like it to be better. <laughs> I would like that ab crunch part to work better, but it's still a really good one. So I recommend it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you own this guy, let me know which version you own. And if your torso is extra soft and flexible, or if yours is stiffer like mine, let me know. Or if you have the first one, let me know what QC issues you have. Cause apparently it was riddled. All right, okay, there it is. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. I have new videos just about every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.